Welcome to the nominee interviews for Epoch 7 and with me today I have Kieran. What's going on my man? Not too much bro, how you doing? Uh, good, good. Yo, I love elections because I get to have these conversations with you guys. Get to put you guys on the hot seat and, and see what you guys come up with. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump straight into the questions, man. The first topic that I want to discuss, it seems like this topic just isn't going away about the council compensation. It feels like I've been doing this quite a while now and it, it's still here. So what I want to ask you is, what are your thoughts on the current structure of the council uh, compensation? And what are your thoughts on the IIP that just passed? changing it from stable coins back into ILV as a payout? I mean, it, it's always going to be a contentious issue. It has been literally since Epoch 1. Uh, myself, personally, I I don't care if it was completely removed. I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, obviously, I don't think that that makes sense for... Uh, the rest of the people that are joining the council. We want to really uh, incentivize people that are putting in quite a bit of work and uh, making decisions that we can't take lightly, right? Like mm. we're, we're literally directing the DAO and at this stage uh, with uh, governance V1 in place, it's only five people. And yes, they're voted in but it's a very very important role so for me i think you know what whatever the the community consensus is i'm okay with uh i'm also okay with it with it going back into ilv i think that uh, a lot of the people that end up on the council uh for the most part end up just restaking that right they, they're yeah. already invested in the project and if not they want to be and so, you know, for me, going back to, to ILV makes sense. Uh, in terms of our runway, obviously, we have uh, a lot of ILV in the treasury. And, uh, and so from that perspective, it makes sense. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, cool. And I'm, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on you, man. You're in a unique situation because you've been in multiple epochs with that one of the topics is the amount of compensation that council members are getting. And I know it doesn't affect you necessarily, but based on the output from the council, do you think that that compensation is fair? Do you think it should go up? Do you think it should go down? Where do you stand on that? I mean, again, it's, it's pretty tough, but I think it's... Uh, so I would say in previous epochs, there's certainly been less interaction, less meetings, and uh, and I've been really, really, really happy with the council this time. I think mm. uh, they've they've done a great job. They have looked at it not from their own perspective. They're they're looking at it truly from the community's perspective and from mm. a, a very holistic DAO view, which I think is is really good. So it's very tough for me to say, to, to sit here and say, I think we should reduce it because it has been such a good epoch. I think part of that as yeah. well is, is the fact that we, we moved from three months to six months. It's given us a lot more time to understand each other and, and get each other. So I'm okay with it. But at the same time, I totally understand as well that you know we're, we're in a bear market. There are constraints. So I would also be okay with it being reduced a little bit as well. I definitely don't think it should be increased, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's where I stand on it. Yeah. And Kieran, with these questions, I am giving them to you because they are the same as everyone else and I'm not changing them for you. So it's all good. bear with me with these questions. One of the, uh, the next question is kind of funny to be asking you specifically, but in the last six months, how have you contributed to Alluvium and why do you believe that this is being beneficial for the DAO? So, what a lot of people don't realize and what we're trying to work out that we're, we're building a system in that will be introduced in governance V2, there, there needs to be a bridge, right? There's this disconnect yes. between the general community and the internal, uh, I would say, management of, uh, of the DAO. And... 
what I really like about having the council, and it'll obviously be uh, even better once we have more smaller committees and then that that one still that that one large committee is we get to we get to hear the different perspectives but without having a internal person that understands all of the the different nuances the different regulation the advice that we're getting from legals it makes it very very hard for the council to deliberate and make decisions that are based on the knowledge at hand, right? So yeah. I think whether it's me or someone else, there needs to be that internal person and it needs to be ideally someone that that is in those conversations, uh, a higher up person in, you know, who's an admin or, or one of the, the, the leaders. And, uh, and yeah, that's... Uh, that's kind of what I bring to the table. Yeah, uh, I'm. I always look at things from the perspective of the community, and the reason is the community has the power, right? Like we need to be making decisions that the community wants, right? And that's why mm. I don't mind having all of the discourse in uh, in the chats. That's why I've been suggesting for a while we need to have polling. Because that information helps us get a baseline of what do the people actually want? And it's easy to yeah. say, you know, we voted you in and, and so therefore you can just make calls on things. But it's not as simple as that, right? Like there, there are very, as I said, there are very, very tough decisions to make. And I think it wouldn't be the greatest situation if we in the council just decided to go, okay, we're going to make the call on this no matter what. And we're not going to listen to mm -hmm. the community. You voted us in and that's the way that it is. So I always yeah. try and be as partial as possible when, when it comes to making decisions and, uh, and just really, really listening to what the community wants. Cause if we lose the community, we lose everything. Yeah. And I think that's the, that the hard thing is, is really, like you say, listening and doing what the community wants, but also understanding when that's not the right idea, right? And doing what's best for the DAO, where the community might be overlooking something. It's kind of finding that balance, which I think is the hard, that's the hardest part of the job. You kind of mentioned Governance V2. So I want to dive in a little bit deeper into that topic. And that's Governance V2 is, is very close to being proposed. With that in mind, what do you believe are the major flaws of Governance V1? And how would you like to amend that in governance v2? I think there's a there's a couple of things to unpack there, but the the first one is that we really want to make the nomination process more rigorous, and part of that plays into having uh, more committees that are more specialized, right? I don't mm -hmm. think it makes sense that uh, certain IIPs and ICCPs are voted on by people that don't have expert knowledge on the subject. And, and, and we've found that across multiple epochs where you've, you've, got, uh, you've got two out of five or even three out of five people that are voting on something like uh, a tokenomics IIP, right, or ICCP, and they don't have any experience building tokenomics, or it might be something to do with marketing, or it might be something to do with finance. And so it's all about having these committees of experts that we can get that information from on a readily uh, available basis and having them compensated to do so. So you have experts across the the all, all of these different fields that <clears throat> that essentially are feeding this information back up to this main council so they can make the most informed decision possible right and and that's what it is all about in governance v2 is we want to make things as transparent as possible by but but also making sure that we stay within this sweet spot of staying a DAO, 
right? Like we can't yeah. get to a stage where someone deems us as a company or a security. We need to stay yeah. decentralized, but uh, but we also can do that, I think, in a more efficient way by having these mm. smaller committees. So that's basically it. No, I agree. Yeah, I am excited. I've said this pretty much in all of these uh, interviews I've had. I am excited to see what the feedback is from the community once they see what we've been working on with Governance V2 because it, it does look like it's going to benefit the DAO. It's going to benefit the, the community. It's it's a lot of plus sides uh, for that. So this next question is very much a, a layup. If you do get elected and Governance V2 does get approved during your term, would you be willing to cut your term short and to conduct a new election so we're able to transition into V2? potentially risking your position on the council. Yeah, so I was the one who actually suggested that. So, so yeah, definitely. yeah, I was going to say it's a very yeah, that, that question is definitely meant for for others not not yourself, but <laughs> but All I right. mean, look, it, it's a no-brainer, right? Like it, and yeah. every single person that is on the council we we were even suggesting rather than making that a thing just let this epoch write a, an IIP to allow this epoch, the the current one, yeah. to go longer because we're so close to delivering the yeah. the new governance v2. It also puts a little bit more pressure on us to go. Okay, we've extended this. We're not doing it. I mean, I, I and I I don't want to speak for the others on the council, but I genuinely believe that if that decision was made, it wouldn't. It's, it's not coming from a selfish point of view. Yes. It's literally coming from a point of view of let's just keep things as smooth as possible. And then as soon as we can pivot to, to governance V2, every single person that is on the council agreed, we just start the nominations again. And as yes. I said, then we get the benefit of that rigorous nomination process where we're going through a situation where everyone has to literally almost like, like putting in a resume, right? Like not yeah. just the, the very brief, hey, I'm <laughs> this guy and this is what I've done and blah, blah, blah. Like putting in, this is my profession. This is why I think I can benefit the DAO. These are the mm -hmm. skills that I bring to it. This is how long I've been in, to, in, in crypto. And so I think anyone that's wanting to, to push that back is someone that shouldn't be a council member anyway. And so yeah. I think you're going to get the same response from every single current council member. And I think that's the way that it should be. No, 100%, 100%. All right. And so this last question, actually, I've, I'm going to add an, an additional question at the end, right? Just based on the conversation we're seeing in the community. But this the second to last question now is something that I'm very interested to get your take on. Discussing council members' duties, their responsibilities, the expectations of a council member, if you had to write a formal IIP to clarify what a council member's duties and time commitments are, what would be included in that IIP? What do you personally, as the founder, expect from a council member? I expect a council member to carefully review all of the discourse in Discord, all of that discussion, even though sometimes it gets heated. And, and to be honest, you know, <laughs> I'm usually <laughs> part of that meet, but it's it's part of your job, right? Like you need to be reviewing because ultimately you are the delegate of the people. And so if you're making a decision that doesn't fit with what the majority in the community is asking for, ultimately an IIP or an ICCP, I, ICCP that, that goes through is... Uh, is not going to be in favor of the, the majority of the DAO. And that's when confidence starts to erode. And we, we don't want that, right? So the yeah. first and, and foremost, you have to be active. You have to be uh, looking at, at what the people want. And then at the same time, you need to be using your expertise in whatever field that you have to really apply that where it matters. Right. And, mm. and, and I'm speaking about V1 in, in this yeah. instance. And that's, again, why I really liked this current council, because when we're discussing things and we've got an external chat where we go into depth and, and we also have arguments back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's definitely, you know, uh, just as, as many robust discussions in, in there as there is the community. But 
there's been times where people have stepped back and said, look, this isn't my, my expertise, you know, so I'm going to listen to the three or four other guys that have more experience in this. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and again, that's why I'm really looking forward to governance feed too, because like you say, everyone's going to be specialized. We're going to have these like higher level, Mm -hmm. higher quality conversations in those specialized, uh, subcommittees, as you put it. So the final question, and this is one that I didn't send you, so it's going to be an off-the-cuff answer, is it's pretty much about the conversation we're seeing right now about the proposal to potentially turn the revenue from Illuvatars and stop that from being redistributed, but actually changing that back into the, going straight back into the vault for the runway. What are your thoughts on that? You've kind of said that, that this was something that you had thought of, but you didn't want to champion it yourself, obviously because of the optics. What are your thoughts about it? And how do you feel now that the, the community is the one that's brought that up? And, and how do you feel about the, the conversation, the way it's going now? I, <laughs> so honestly, I don't mind tabling anything and championing anything that I think is going to be the best outcome for the DAO, right? Now, in that situation, internally, I brought that up like two months ago now, maybe maybe even longer, right? And the fear was, what if the community lashes out and says, this is ridiculous. Why would we do that? You're, you're now changing the tokenomics and, and all of that kind of stuff. And it doesn't make sense, right? Like the logical thing to do in this situation. And again, I'm coming from a place where I've stated, I don't think we need to, yeah. to do this, right? We have a lot of runway. We have revenues that are just around the corner from multiple different sources. And so I think it's a backup, right? Like th- mm. this whole idea is a safety net. And the more I think about that, the more I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with the idea. Now, mm. the whole discussion around you can't change the tokenomics doesn't make sense we've already changed the tokenomics there was a situation very early on which had a major effect to the distribution of yield through staking and i mean a major effect of Mm. of how decentralized we were going to be the the distribution of the tokens was massively affected when the pre-seed the seed and the team weren't allowed to stake using their locked tokens right Mm. that is in my opinion, a much, much, much greater change. Yeah. It was in the white paper. It was allowed. And someone came along and said, hey, I don't think we should do this. And myself and Danny were the ones who had to go out to the investors. The team unilaterally said, no problem. We, we missed it, right? Like it was something. And that's what I love about decentralized governance mm-hmm. is we missed that. And it was blaringly obvious that the best option was for us to go and change that. Now, did we have seed investors who said, Hey, this is, you know, this is nonsense. When we invested, this was the plan. Yes, we did. Right. And, Mm. and I myself had to manage those conversations. So did Danny. And we basically said to them, this is for the betterment of the doubt. Right. This Mm. is a decision that in the long run is going to mean a more positive outcome for your investment. You're looking at the short term. We need to look at the long term, which is the exact same situation that is occurring right now where people that are short sighted are saying, I want my revenue distributions for remember a product that wasn't actually in the white paper. Not a single person in pre, in seed, in the team, even in the balancer sale, knew that the Louvertars even existed. This was a random idea that I had because I was like, I want to beat Bored Apes, and so let's create a PFP project, right? Now, it's turned into a a huge thing. I think it's going to be highly, highly successful, but let's, let's really boil this down. We're talking about a product which has multiple batches it has multiple sets it's a product that's going to be available in perpetuity Mm. and we're talking about 
the first batch, right? Yeah. Like it's a very, very small subset of what this product is eventually going to be over the next 10 years. And it's do that or it's sell down a, a very, very large portion of our treasury. And once again, we have the ability over time. I don't think that's going to be an issue either, but I think it's going to be more of an issue than us diverting these, these initial revenues. And mm. on top of that, what I've suggested is that if we don't need it, if I'm right and we get the revenues in and everything works out totally fine and our treasury has enough runway and we're all of a sudden we have more revenue coming in than our outgoings, we just put the revenue from Aluvatars back it's not like we have no revenue and we've got to spend yeah. this immediately. We just put it back in the vault. And then the yeah. entire discussion is moot, right? And yeah. all it shows is that we, as a DAO, were able to coordinate and sophisticatedly look at something and go, okay, we may have a problem, right? There, mm. there may be in a, in a terrible, terrible world, we may run into a problem. So let's, alleviate that potential yeah. problem and it may need to be used but it probably won't and yeah. that shows how decentralized governance can be extremely good for the protocol yes it changes our tokenomics but we're not talking about in-game revenues once again which would be mm. a little bit crazy no one's suggesting that we're yeah. talking about a, a, a very external product right so yeah. I don't know, man. From, and again, I, I'd like, I, I think the really positive thing, and Aaron has said this, he said to me, I, I can't believe it, right? Like I actually, you know, the, the majority is saying, yeah, that's this yeah. makes very logical, right? It's like it's very a, logical. It's, it's it is very logical. logical. I'm so, right? like it, yeah. It's a very I'm supposed logical. to be objective, but it is very logical. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm still yet to hear <clears throat> an argument against it that, is better that that makes sense right like yeah. i'm i'm sitting here going the mo I, once again the minority and they're a very 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 small subset are the most vocal right and yeah. it almost seems like i'm talking to the same people that have the same issue <laughs> over the past 18 months now i'm not insinuating anything <laughs> i'm extremely tired at the moment and so you know we're, we're all working as hard as we possibly can but we have shown time and time again that as a DAO, we're all here for the long term. This is not a flash in the pan project. This is not just a, a, a get rich quick thing. We're here yeah. to make an entertaining game and build an IP that lasts the ages. And so yeah. this is honestly a blip on the radar. And I think once these things blow over and again maybe it's a good thing that that this sort of discussion has happened because it shows that we can once again coordinate as a, a, a DAO and get things done when we need to and it not affect the token holders right yeah. so that's yeah. where i'm at now man yo kieran i appreciate you taking the time i know you've been up since like 5 a.m and this was a last last minute kind of thing but i appreciate you coming on and, and having this chat with me man before we close this out, is, is there anything you want to say? Any last words before we end this? I'd probably like to say, look, I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> a little bit hostile sometimes. I'm very protective of the team. I'm very protective of the project. It's just the way that I am, right? Yeah. And we have constantly shown that we are here to do the right thing by the community because doing the right thing by the community is the way that you get a positive outcome when it comes to the entire project. So yeah. I'm sorry if sometimes I get a little bit angry and, uh, and, and, you know, I got to work on that. I really do, but it comes from a good place. I promise you, I, you know, I just, it's, it's a, it's a very, very, personal thing we're putting mm -hmm. not just me that like the entire team is putting their their life 
into this. And so, yeah, I, if yeah. I've offended anyone in the, in the process of us getting to, to whatever the outcome is, I do apologize. I don't mean it, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's my, my reasoning. Yeah. Yo, that's a, that's one way to end this off. All right. Yo, Kieran, I appreciate you. For anyone else that is watching, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you follow this channel for more governance content. We're going to be flooding this page with governance stuff. So make sure you follow this and keep up to date. But anyway, I appreciate you guys and peace out.